St. Timothy's is trying to help God create a world that cherishes all living things, no exceptions, all human beings, all animals, everything that God created and pronounced good. Each Sunday, we gather to remember God's inclusive vision for the world. Each Sunday, we pray for the energy to make this vision a reality. Welcome to the Well St. Timothy's Online Sunday service on this, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. It is great to be with you. As we begin this service, I have actually a suggestion and a request. The suggestion is that as you gather for worship online or in person for that matter, how important it is to bring where you are right now. You know, in this community, the last few weeks, we've lost a lot of wonderful people and many of us are grieving profoundly. And if that's where you are this morning, I invite you to, to name that. Whether it's the loss of people, the loss of health, the loss of dreams, or maybe this morning you're just so full of gratitude for all of God's blessings, bring, bring that. The second thing is a request as we continue to have online worship with people in this city and this country and around the world for that matter, we would love to hear from you to hear from you about what is most helpful in these online services and quite honestly, what is least helpful so that we can continue to develop these services in a way that, that speak to your deepest needs. So I encourage you at the end of this service to send an email to rogerg at stTimothys.com, saint all spelled out, stTimothys.com. And just briefly let me know, most helpful, least helpful. Thank you in advance. And now let us worship God. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask in our ignorance and asking, have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people of Israel. I will spare them no longer. The songs of the temple shall become wailings on that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah smaller and the shekel heavier and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account and everyone mourn who lives in it and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again, like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of a hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from the sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, a worker of deception. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt. Oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you, and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at the tyrant, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth, and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. The Gospel for today is from the 10th chapter of Luke. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A woman welcomed him into her home. 
Martha welcomed Jesus into her home. What does it mean to welcome Christ into our homes? The last few weeks, our texts from the Hebrew scriptures and from the gospel have really talked about how, how do we welcome Christ into our homes? How do we really live this way of faith? How do we live in a way that we can love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and with all of our mind? And how do we love our neighbor as ourself? And so this summer is really a way that we seek to continue to learn and grow in God's word. And these scriptures in front of us help us to live in our homes. What does it mean to love God, that God loves us, no exceptions, and to love our neighbors, no exceptions? When Roger preached last week, he talked about the prophet Amos and the truth-telling that happens. And so as we welcome Jesus into our homes, we are able to really tell the truth about ourselves and about our society. And sometimes that means doing justice and, and loving and, and working towards systemic change in our world, and other times it means simply offering a glass of water to our neighbor in need. Other times it's receiving that glass of water from, from someone. So as this woman, Martha, welcomed Jesus into her home at Bethany, about two miles away from Jerusalem, it was a place that he had been before and um, that he will be again before his crucifixion um, that Mary, his, her sister, Martha's sister, will anoint Jesus and prepare him for burial. This time, Jesus is along the way and he stops in at her home. And we hear of Martha being this hostess with the mostess. Oh my goodness, she is busy, she is baking, she is cleaning. As an unexpected guest, it's like, oh, okay, what do we have to do to prepare the things to get ready? We had guests at our house um, that were not expected this week, and we knew about it about an hour beforehand, so everybody, you know, tried to pick things up and get things swept up so that when the time came for them to be there, we could really focus on being with them. And I think that perhaps that's what Jesus is pointing out to Martha. When she comes in and she is so caught in worry and distraction, and she doesn't think it's very fair that Mary is just sitting there at Jesus' feet and listening. Don't you care? that she has left me to do with all that work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha and her desire to be hospitable is directing God in what to do. Hmm. In her service, she gets, in her attempts of, of serving, she becomes the authority and tells God what to do. And I've been there. I've done that with people coming to my home, with people coming to our church. We had this amazing, huge, beautiful funeral on, on Monday, and there were so many people. And so I just felt very worried and distracted by many things before the service began. But thanks be to God that spirit intercedes and calms our hearts and prepares us just to simply be present. So as we hear this text from the Gospel of Luke with Jesus being welcomed into the home of Mary and Martha, we wonder what is it like for Jesus to be in our homes? How do we live this way of faith? Jesus, he um, highlights what Mary does and that simply to be, to be in God's presence. 
And so often as Christians, we think, oh, it's all the acts of service that we do. It's loving our neighbor, all of those different things that we have to do, 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 do. And all of that is so important and it's so essential and it's so crucial in how we live out our life of faith. But there are times at least I have, I have wobbled blindly in my attempts of service and have not gone about service in a very centered way. And the invitation we have is to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that first. And so Mary is taking this act of discipleship. She is sitting down and listening, aware fully in that moment of what is happening, that Jesus is with her and she wants to listen. She wants to hear, she wants to know and be fed and be led by Christ. And so for all of us who, um, we embody all of these realities, our Martha reality of doing, of gracious hospitality, um, but then when we start to get resentful of others and angry and, and bitter, um, to check in with that. And if Jesus were coming to our house, would we want to be busy making it look like everything's great and we have all things in order? Or would we just want to sit at his feet and get a cold cup of water together? Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her, Jesus says to Martha. This gift of God's grace, this way of having Christ make a home with us, inviting Christ into our home is that he abides and dwells in us and that we can remember that we are God's beloved and truly out of that centered place, then go and serve the world and make Christ's presence known in our acts of service and kindness. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. And as I looked at the Greek this week, um, it's uh, that we have our minds on so many other things, that we are so busy and preoccupied by things that we think that matter. Um, Jesus is inviting us to consider and take a deep breath, especially in these summer months, just to really bask in God's love and care for us, that it is not what we do and produce that we are worthy of God's love and belonging, that simply by being God's children, by sitting and listening, by dwelling in the word, by taking the time simply to be, that's really often all that God is asking of us. And as a church community, we have many opportunities to do that. This experience right here and now is taking time just to simply be in God's presence together as we listen for the scripture, as we hear these words and are invited to oh, sit at Jesus' feet as we open our hearts to having him welcome in our homes. So how, how do you sit at Jesus' feet? Where do you take the time to listen as Mary did? Listen with God. Where do you sit at Jesus' feet? When do you sit at Jesus' feet? And also this Gospel of Luke is inviting us to consider what about the times that we're just simply worried and distracted, that we have so many things on our mind, that we are so preoccupied that we don't even realize Jesus is with us, <laughs> that he's there. And so we keep rushing around and then hear that still small voice that calls us to rest and be with God. I'm grateful for St. Timothy's for um, Tuesday morning, the contemplative prayer group that gathers, the men who gather together in silence and in prayer. I'm grateful for the Bible study that um, comes together to hear God's word and really pray into it. I'm grateful for the committee meetings, those doers of our church, the vestry who not only does, but also listens 
really intentionally this time as we are moving out of COVID to listen with you and with God for where God is calling to really listen and be present before we um, continue to act out into the world. I'm grateful for the communications team who's really prayerfully present with um, these different themes that are emerging as we're, we're paying attention to the spirit. It's a, a discerning body, a listening body. How do we listen and get centered and then serve? Because part of the act of discipleship, this is amazing that Jesus honored Mary's simply being instead of her doing. That was not the role of women uh, to be disciples. And yet here he is honoring her and acknowledging her as such. And then also we hear um, with Amos and the prophetic call that is there, wow, watch out you that trample on the needy and um, bring ruin to the poor of the land. The welcoming Jesus into our home means being honest about what's going on in the world around us. And um, with this prophetic voice, really paying attention to how are the poor being treated among us and in our nation? What does that look like right now? And is there something that God is inviting us to as a community of faith to respond in centered and prayerful ways and also through action, having sat and listened at Jesus' feet, then going out to serve. Amos, what he had, um, what he was cautioning the people against, and Amos is an amazing prophet because he's one of the first, right? And he comes in and we're realizing, wow, God is doing something new here. And um, Amos announces, be careful here how we're treating the poor, how we're cushioning our 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 scales um, with the different values that we have. Be careful that we're not um, exploiting people. Let's be careful here as a society. And he is bringing a spotlight and asking us to pay attention to that. So part of that perhaps was what Jesus was speaking to Mary at her home as Martha welcomed him in. And to, to really hear what is going on and pay attention to where God is stirring in that as we welcome Christ into our homes. How do we sit at Jesus' feet and take time in these summer months to really hear how God loves us, no exceptions, and really have that take root in our homes? And then how do we love our neighbors, no exceptions? What does it mean to bring dignity to those who are um, suffering? And what does it mean to announce their belovedness as we are reminded again of our own? So thanks be to God for Mary, for Martha, for Jesus, for Amos, for this time together to dwell in God's word and truly sit at Jesus' feet. Amen. Dear God, like Martha in today's gospel, we are worried and distracted by many things. Today, you remind us that there is another way to live. Instead of an endless list of fretful preoccupations, there is need of only one thing Help us choose what Jesus calls the better part, as Mary did, to sit at our Lord's feet and listen to your wisdom. Remind us, dear God, that although the chores of life will never end, your words will never be taken away from us. Grant us the grace to stop engaging in the frantic cares of this life and to listen to you as our teacher about the way, the truth, and the life that never ends. We ask your help with the concerns of this life, trusting that you will be in the midst of them with us. Help all those suffering from the effects of natural disasters and violence 
especially your children in Ukraine, refugees, and those whose lives have been destroyed because of gun violence. Help our planet suffering the effects of climate change and our misuse of its wondrous resources. Please empower leaders to find rapid and lasting solutions to these situations. We pray for those suffering from illnesses in mind, body, or spirit, including addictions. For our brothers and sisters suffering from poverty, loneliness, deprivations, and systemic injustice. For all those incarcerated in the criminal justice system and their loved ones longing for new life with them. For caregivers devoting their lives to helping all these people. May we also serve as your hands and feet in this world. Bestow your healing power on those in our prayer list, especially Mike Forrest, Nancy Rydell, Clifford, Jesse Loomis, Dory Dreisbach, Bryce, Jackson, Bob Emery, Tommy Leibcap, Grace Owens, Jane Habig, Angela Berner, Tom Keller, Suzanne Burton, Sayla Maisie Hart, Lisa Bernheisel, Wendy Jones, Brandon Frerking, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We pray for the dearly departed, especially Heavenly Mother and Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we leave our worship today and make our way out through these doors or the doors of your house or wherever you're watching this, remember that God goes with you. Remember that you are not alone. Remember that God wants to sustain you in your part in this mission in this world to use you to be a vehicle of God's love and hope. And as we do every Sunday, let's conclude our worship by praying together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>